we just submitted our first exercise and now we're going to introduce our next one. So our first exercise was the line art jumble and it was an introduction to compositing raster images, pixel based images, and we stuck to just black line art that we composited together. Now we're going to look at the other type of digital image we're learning this semester, which is not pixel based, it is vector based. So vectors give you very, very clean shapes because they are derived from, from algorithms from point to point. So they can be straight lines between the points or they can be curved lines. And those curves will always be perfectly clean. So no matter how much you zoom in, it will, it will look like it's cut out with an exacto knife from the same file. Vectors are the perfect thing to use for, for icons, for t-shirt graphics, for logos, for type design, anything that you would want to be both scalable and really clean and graphic. Vectors are not great for photorealism because photorealism has a lot of soft edges, right? Think of like hair and all the shadows within a haircut. Vectors aren't great at that because they always have to be kind of contained shapes. Though there are people that do photorealism with vectors, but it's not ideal. What we're going to do is we're going to do another type of communication. Not like a jumble of lines, but we're going to create an emoji. And emojis tend to be pretty graphic and simple. They have to have a lot of visual power because they have to be used really small. So we can design them bigger. And we're going to use vector shapes to do it. So some past examples. We're going to start with a pretty limiting online program that's like free flat emoji maker. It's linked in the assignment. And you're going to have to do just your own mix of its preset options, which isn't going to give you exactly what you want. But what's good about being limited that way is then you'll see why it's helpful to have control of these tools for yourself. We're just going to use what we make in Emoji Maker today as a guideline for what we create ourselves using vector shapes. So that's what the start might be. But then we get to fully customize it by the end. Vectors will always start as just a flat color that's filled in, but then you can and you can see these vector outlines here, uh, but then you can add things like an outline around the shape. You can fill it with things like gradients and textures. There are lots of extras we can play with, and we're just going to get quickly introduced to them. So your theme could be based on a band book. This one's from Lord of the Flies. Um, this one's from The Heat You Give. This one was for Lord of the Rings. But it can be on any theme you want. I think I'm going to be doing a cat, I guess, since that was my theme for my line art jumble. And then, of course, you can always follow along with us and review what we go over in class with our class playlist. So in my morning section where we're doing this all with Adobe products, we, we introduced it, and I'm doing a, a cowboy Hawaiian theme. And then we can look at past examples. You know, if you want to get ahead, you can look at the free for exercise two. There it is. So we're going to be using PhotoP still, but we're going to be using vector tools within PhotoP. So it's, it's interesting. And I have the full directions here. So if you're going to use the same theme you used from the first exercise, that's great. Think what, what an emoji might be that works with that. It could be a Great Gatsby emoji. It could be um, a Witch's Hour. No, that wasn't it. Midnight Gospel. Midnight Gospel emoji. It could be whatever you're interested in, a SpongeBob emoji. There's a lot of emo emojis that have yet to be created. This is the program we're going to go to first. So I did a cat jumble. I'll do a cat emoji. So this emoji maker, you'll notice it will start with a random generator. And so you can kind of see the, the different potentials from these templates. But what I want you to think of this as is as cutouts of construction paper. So my partner works at uh, the library at 
Texas A&M San Antonio, has to do a lot of displays right, on, on boards. She's very creative, she's very artistic, but often she has to just buy these packs of like Valentine cutouts and die cuts and then find ways to make that interesting as a display. This is a whole pack of emoji die cuts, certain colors, certain shapes that can only be arranged in certain ways. So your ability, if you hit trash, you'll start with a default, is to first pick a base shape. And you can only pick one. So you can pick kind of this demon. You can pick a ghost. Going a little slow for me. You can pick a skull, a poop, you know, whatever is a good basis for you. But you can't rotate them. You can't stretch them. You can't reorient them at all. They're stuck in this template. So if I'm going to do a cat, like I might actually want to build it up on this devil shape because you got some, some ear-like things there. I can scroll and see what other options there are. But this isn't meant to be really direct to what you're going to end up with. It's going to get you started. Or I might use the monkey. I kind of like the monkey. I haven't used the monkey before, so why don't I do that? Okay, next, you're going to click on the next set, which is going to be the eyes. Now, everything except for that base, you can use multiples of them. So I can layer up as many eyes as I want, right? And when you use something, it's highlighted dark gray. And then when you click it again, it will be deselected. So I'm thinking, what kind of cat do I want to show? If I'm basing it on my cat, I think I want it to be, I mean, that's pretty good. Pretty wide-eyed. Maybe the colors aren't quite right. These are all things we'll be able to change when we make it in our own vectors. So this is just kind of a guideline. And you can see if it's additive, you can get some weird, interesting shapes. Like I kind of like that because it gives me eyes and kind of internal eyelashes or, or eyebrows all together. And I can disregard the weird shape it gives me here. Now, it also matters the order you click them, just like layering up cut out pieces of paper. So whatever one you click on last, that's going to be on top of everything else. Okay, next, I'm going to go to mouths. And let's see. That's kind of a good cat mouth. It's not quite the right size. I don't get to resize it yet. But there might be better ones. And I could use something maybe even as a nose. So that kind of works. I'm starting to see it. And this is another way just to, to get out of our own way and get started. So we have something to react to. And you can layer up as many of these as you want. And then the last one you pick is going to be the one that's on top. All right. Lastly, accessories. So I could do a cool cat. I could do an upset cat. An alarmed home alone cat. I have some hands I could use if I wanted. Let's see what's missing. Well, whiskers. That'll be helpful just as a guideline. And is there anything in particular I want to say about the cat? Oh, there's a, a nose. <laughs> there's a mask. So maybe, maybe I'll do a, a pandemic cat. So how would I put the nose on top of the mask? Well, I would unselect it and then put the nose on top. Right. How would I put the whiskers on top of the mask? Well, I unselect it, put it back on top. You just got to try things, see what they do. Kind of like some of those interesting shapes. And no matter how simple you try to make it, it's going to be kind of tricky to turn it into vector shapes. Because vector shapes are a little tricky. 
but we will work within those limitations. And this project often turns out for some students, for about a third of the students, this project turns out as something they want in their final portfolio, just because it's such a clean kind of shape-based exercise that they get to have fun with. All right, I think this is going to do it. As weird as it is. So now what do I do? So if we look at the instructions, next you're going to practice screen grabbing again. So you get it close to what you want. In my demo, I'm doing a the hate you give emoji. So a victim of police violence. But in this one, I'm going to zoom in until it's as big as I can get it on my screen. And then I'm just going to do Command Shift 4, draw a box around it. I can also click Export, and I can just take the PNG they give me, but it's going to be pretty low quality. But it's fine, because it's just a guideline. Just so I can show you what we're actually learning, I'm going to download the SVG, which we're not going to use, but I'm going to show you what that is. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. It's the most basic kind of vector file because that's how emojis are made. So even though they're showing on low res on my screen, if I bring those to my desktop, a little PNG, my screen grab, and the SVG, I'm going to organize those into a new folder, which is for exercise two in my class folder. All right, so let's see what the difference is between these. The PNG that you can download from it doesn't have a background, right? But it has this annoying feature where it's going to be cropped off or, or it's stuck right at the edge. You see how the top of it is right at the edge and I can't get any space there? That's because PNGs save only the pixel data. And so if there's empty space, it won't necessarily show that. Whereas my screenshot does not have any empty space. It's everything I captured, right? You'll notice that this quality is a little bit lower res when we zoom in. Their PNGs are incredibly small versus my screen grab on these screens is just a little bit better. But they're both pretty low quality because they're both screen resolution. And emojis, of course, are not meant to be huge. But, and you don't need to do this, because you probably don't want to deal with opening Illustrator, but if you open the SVG with a vector program, like Adobe Illustrator, which we'll be learning uh, around the midterm of the class. Uh-oh. You didn't like one aspect of it. But it will come in, and this will look pretty similar to what we did with our compositing. So this comes in and it has lots of different layers. And these layers are each vector shapes. So what do I mean by a vector shape? If I zoom in on that little pink oval, no matter how much I zoom in, it will always be perfectly clean, like it's cut out. That's the beauty of a vector. And so it can be outputted into any shape. So SVGs are an odd old format we're going to learn better formats to work with within Illustrator and Photoshop and PhotoP and a freeware program called Vector.com. But SVGs are, are basic vectors. And what vector programs allow you to do is the kind of thing we're used to doing now with compositing. We can play with it. We can mess with it. We can reshape it. We can turn a monkey into a cat. So we're going to learn to do that with vector shapes, but we're not going to use Adobe Illustrator to do it. Instead, we're going to use PhotoP. But we're not going to use the usual tools in PhotoP. We're going to use what are called the vector shape tools. So once you've got your emoji, and it's okay if it's not anywhere near what you want your final one to be, it will get you started. You are going to open PhotoP, close the last thing that you saved, and instead of opening a new file and setting it to 8x10, 